Let's have a look at the sides. And Warrington, a couple of names out of Winfield Cup in years gone by with Greg Mackey and Bruce Maguire. Two young Welshmen, uh, Harris in the centres and Lee on the wing. And uh, Yeston Harris, he played 5-8 down at Cardiff. He's an exciting youngster and you should keep an eye out for him tonight. Australia, and the big news is that Paul Harrigan is out and Glenn Lazarus comes in. Brad Fittler goes onto the bench. Florimo plays centres. Brasher at fullback. Langer carries side. And Sirenen is also in the side, which means that all of the bench players from Old Trafford run on tonight. And unfortunately, a pretty ordinary night here for Rugby League in Warrington. Joining us once again, as he did in the second test, is Great Britain legend Alex Murphy. Alex, you know the side so well over here. You've seen Warrington lately. How confident is their camp? Well, I think you'll find out tonight there'll be a lot of enthusiasm from Warrington. They fancy the chances quietly. Uh, they always give Turing sides a very, very hard game here at, one, at Willisville. I personally think tonight it'll just be a little bit beyond them, but they'll never stop trying, these guys. So their 11th game on two of the Kangaroos, a buoyant Australian camp after the second test on the weekend. Warrington looking to cause an upset, and I hate to say it, but Rabbits, I guess that's your cue. That's a big occasion for Greg Mackey, 33 years of age, as he takes the Warrington side out onto Wilderspool Stadium. He's playing his 81st consecutive game for Warrington. Greg Mackey, who formerly played for Canterbury and Illawarra. Beautiful sight as Alan Langer captains the Kangaroos. Big Ciro in the front row. Terry Hill, the centres. Wendell Saylor plays his 10th match out of 11. And they're greeted by a rousing reception. A mixed reception, you might say, but English fans have packed yet another of their provincial grounds. Michael Hancock back from that injured shoulder at Wigan. He suffered several weeks ago. And have a look at them. Another sellout and another game delayed by police and officials to let the crowd get in. The pitch here at Wilderspool is quite heavy. Tim Brasher then to start. Keeping it low. And from inside his own 20 metre line, the centre for Warrington. Harris plays the ball now. Wing three quarter mark, Foster comes away with it. I mentioned that Harris is a player well worth watching. Several Sydney clubs are interested in him. Cullen playing it now. They're working it out towards the 40-metre line, a loose ball. Now the fullback, Lee Penny, joins in. He's in the academy side for next week. So they use up their first set of six, and there's a barging run. It'll bring a penalty, however. Gary Tease, he took it up very strongly. Yeah, swinging arm there from David Fairley. You see here, T's going forward. Well, I, I don't think Fairley did too much damage there. Paul Sheridan luckily missed over the top as the restart now sees Maguire take it 32 metres out. In fact, 42 out. And that's Maguire. That's Darby Sheer now, the lock. Fairly in the run-on side for Australia. That's a late change. That's uh, Jonathan Roper. Alex was saying to me, Roper and Penny are both very talented. Tease again. Just inside the 40-metre line. Warrington looking all right with the ball as Maggie looks to Harris and finds him. Grassing tackle, though, by Florimo. Playing in the centres for the first time in the run-on side. Mackey's kick is high. Pressure for Brasher. Oh, that's got to be a penalty to Australia. They played the man, not the ball. It's very, very important the way that everything revolves around Greg Mackey. Notice the up and under from Greg Mackey. A good chase, but obviously taking the man out of the game. A penalty to Australia. 
Well, I actually didn't think there was a great deal in this, and this shot should show just when the chasers did arrive. It was very close. That was almost play on for mine. I'm glad you're not refereeing, Sterlo. Well, they arrived the same time at the, as the football. Michael Hancock, first touch. Bruce Maguire playing in that grey head apparel. Cyrano with a little dummy. Put it down, though, Brasher. It was an awful pass from the big man. And he's called it back. Yes, yeah, a double knock on there. Lee Penny in attempting to pick up the football. Knocked on as well. A timely tackle from Greg Mackey. You see there, Paul Cyrano was just getting his arms free for Brasher, but knocked the ball down. The fullback knocked on there. I think if Brasher did have happened, he got his foot to that ball, Peach, and it looks like it could have been a four-pointer to Australia. Kevin Walden. Now Derry Hill, 40 metres out from the line. Warrington only beaten three times. In the 11 matches they played in the Premiership, they're running fifth at the moment on the table. There's Trim. Had to pull out of the side on Saturday with a mystery illness. From Langer through to Wilders, he kicks ahead for Menzies out wide. Penny goes back into a shallow in goal. And it'll come back to the 20 metre line. Menzies was out there, he knew the play. Warrington, buoyed on by a magnificent crowd at their home stadium. Attention for one of the Australians, it's a Michael Hancock. It might just be a question, how are you? Everything all right? They go open side. The number 11 for Warrington is Cullen. Actually, that wouldn't have been a, a bad ploy from Warrington to play towards Hancock's wing early in this game. As the home side receive a penalty, replay the ball for a tackle infringement. But with Hancock having a suspect shoulder just coming back from injury, it would have been the way to direct play. Another penalty going to the home side and Maloney, the 5'8". Finding the line, he must be fairly proficient at 5'8 play because Yeston Harris did more than a capable job at Cardiff. Now that is Tees. And a cross now for Sanderson. Almost getting through, brought a roar from the crowd as they go inside the 40 metre line. They use the short side. They make the ball do the work. Harris loses it though. Hancock comes up with it. Gets inside Maguire. Runs away from Barlow. Feeds it on for Menzies. Oh, Menzies taken high. It's the 5 8 Maloney that got him. And another high tackle, and there's been plenty of them on the 18th tour of the Kangaroos of, of England. The tap is about to be taken now by Sedaris, 30 metres out from the Warrington line. And Terry Hill doing. The work of a forward. And why wouldn't he? He's as big as one of them. The lock forward now, Jason Smith. Australia in a good attacking position on the second, but the sound of the whistle is a knock on at the dummy half, I feel. Yeah, he's got a good call there, the referee from the touch judge. Didn't see it. The Smith got up to play the ball, and that was just a cold lose. Looked to the touch judge and got the signal. Warrington now, with Maloney trying to buffet his way up, but good strong defence there by Brasher coming in over the top of his 5 8 so Losing around on the first play and a good jolting tackle up the top by Fairley. Second man play for uh, Gary Tees. Barlow, the, the dummy half. Takiri Barlow is a junior Kiwi representative. Now Bruce Maguire. He's seen two grand finals in Sydney football as they go across the back of the ruck. They pick up a ball. Oh, that was high on the number four, Roper. And uh, Jerry Hill. Jerry Hill, I fancy that it was. It might be a bit lucky to survive out there, Jerry Hill. That was a dead set swinging arm, head high tackle. 
What do you think, Alex? Well, I just think that uh, if you look at the uh, the ground, the way he went across, I don't think he could stop actually going across Peter. He was in full flow when he actually made the tattle. I don't think it was deliberate, and I think it was just one of them tattles which happens. A clumsy tackle with the centre coming back inside, but he still did go very high and made good contact. Takes it to within about 38 metres of the Australian line. Mackey now. Mackey across the back, and uh, Maloney is there, and now Yeston Harris finds the wing three-quarter. He centre kicks. And again, some pressure. Kevin Walters is back there, though. Will he get back into the field of play? Yes, he will. The chase by Jonathan Roper, nevertheless. Rain continuing to, to belt down here on Wilderspool. And that's Wendell Saylor. And as we've seen in all the club games, very willing, the home side. Good work down the right-hand side of the field. Fine kick from Foster. And Kevin Walters has done a good sweeping job to get back. shot and another penalty unusual to see Paul Sirin come up after having a high shot put on him I think uh, also he's going to have to look at uh, Robert Connolly uh, this is about five or six uh, head eye tattles and he's going to have to get a grip of this now Florimo good run by Florimo taking Australia about five meters into Warrington's territory Jason Smith chimes in and you could see the urgency of the support players. They know that to follow Jason Smith, invariably you'll get a pass. But others don't seem to have the ability to give. David Fairley losing it and again the home side come up with it. And that's Roper the centre. Just harking back to that high tackle on Serenin. That was the second for the match by Francis Maloney, the 5-8. Well, I would think that he's close to the border. I think also, I think he's the wrong man to keep getting all of his sitting on. He's a, he's a big lad and uh, Francis is a number six. I think I'd think about that carefully. A little knock on there by the loose forward for Warrington, Derby Shear. Very strong tackle here from Paul Siren, and You see the arm coming down, forcing the ball out. A good chance for Australia here. 30 metres out, Kevin Walters looking for Tim Brasher. Finds him second man. He'll ram the decoy, Brasher. Taken out of it, well read by Maloney. They work on the blind side, Walters using Menzies. Menzies popping it out the back. That's David Ferner. 12 out from the line. Several tackles left on this set. No score on the board so far. We've got Langer across for Walters, then Jason Smith back in for Menzies. Sodaris runs the blind side. Smith backs him up. Gets it down for Menzies. Warrington willing in defence. You obviously can see, Ray, there's going to be no shortage of enthusiasm from Warrington. They've been uh, geared up for this game. They've been looking forward to it for a long, long time. Langer combines with Ferner now. This is the last. Langer wants it. The kick is high. Sail up. And the ball bounces, and I believe just over the dead ball line same result back to the 20 meters for the restart a very cool work there from jason lee on the wing the warrington team wendell sailor was bearing down he had the presence of mind to allow the ball to go out and now bring it out from the 20 meter tap really the quality of this warrington defense will be shown by jim sedaris he's been well contained but once he starts getting out of dummy half you know that the defense is starting to tire Tease again. Has the habit of meeting the opposition with his head into them. Chance here for Australia, but uh, cleaning up for Warrington is the second row of Sanderson. He's a fairly very much alert on that play, and again on that one as he goes out from front marker to make the tackle on the fullback. The Warrington getting themselves into a bit of trouble here. Maloney has to clear off his own 10 metre line. And Sailor should be able to take it back almost to the halfway. That's where the first tackle is made on Wendell Sailor. And I have to say that the English defences over here have handled Wendell Sailor pretty well after the first couple of games. 
to play in the first test, of course, but it's been a while since we've seen Wendell make a clean break. Oh, big tackle there, Derbyshire. Smith now. He's looking to unload, and Derbyshire pulled off a big tackle on him. Sadaris using the short side. Fairly. And look at this defence. They're hitting very hard. Hammer-like tackle, some of them, from Warrington. But with the exception of maybe St. Helens and probably Halifax, we've seen this intensity early on from the English club sides. It's just been the two clubs that I can think of that have been able to carry it on for 80 minutes. Walters to play it on the fifth tackle. 30 metres out now. Sudaris on for Langer. Langer puts a little kick in, and here's Hancock steaming down on Foster. Number two for Warrington back to clean it up. And Penny it is, the fullback, who tries to get it out. Almost forced back into the end goal by Sudaris and Hancock. That will be a pleasing sight for Bob Fulton if Michael Hancock comes through this match unscathed. I just wonder what uh, Bobby Fulton, what thoughts will be going through his mind. He had some very, very happy memories at Warrington. He had some great games at Warrington. And I'm just wondering now what he'll actually be thinking happy days at Warrington and what's going to happen tonight. Well, it's uh, the birthplace of Bob Fulton. And he played 16 matches for them. He scored an average of a try a match. Maloney has been felled late. The referee said, I saw it play on. Walters goes back into the middle of the ruck. Spectacular dive by Maloney, although he's clutching at his head in back play. Langer now, over for Hill. Yet to score a try on the kangaroo tour is Terry Hill. 18 out from the line. Great atmosphere here, tremendous stadium. This is Ferner. Now for Lang, a little juggle there by the captain. And then he's, he's able to get it away for Sedaris, but he's picked off from behind. Australia really being hamstrung by an enthusiastic and flat defence. Florimo did a grand job at Old Trafford. Menzies on for Walters. Long ball across. Smith on. Oh, shocking pass. Terry Hill recovers well. Tries to get it away. And Warrington come up with it. Blood on the forehead of Florimo. Maguire. And Bruce being forced back by one of his old teammates, Sirenin. That was a good example of being able to attack without the football. Warrington really going at the Australian players. Terry Hill cleaned the ball up, tried to get a, a pass away. The defence had arrived. Now trying to get out of their own territory is the fullback Penny. That came off one of the Warrington players. Uh, it's not a knock-on. Number one, it went backwards, but number two, it came off the back of the player. Hancock now. Sedaris. Looking across at uh, a selection of players that he can use and fairly took it up before offloading for the, uh, the second row forward there. Stephen Menzies. Ferner comes back into the middle. Ball comes out. Warrington again coming up with it. It's very, very interesting also. Listening to the benches, especially Warrington, remarks coming from the bench. He's telling one or two of the players to get stuck in. I don't think you need to tell them that. They're doing exactly what he's been saying. Here they are now trying to grind their way out of the danger zone. And a touch judge has come in. For the tackle on Jonathan Roper. And the touch judge having a long look at Terry Hill again. Maguire now working on the wide blind side, but Terry Hill really fired up, forces him back. The ball's not with him, though. With this man, Roper, the centre. Now through Mackey, a short ball up for the second row forward. Sanderson, the head geared second rower. Mackey wants it again. Maloney is with him without the head gear now. A test for Brasher. Well, the winger is down on top of Brasher. He's certainly offside. Uh, there's a great deal of urgency there for Warrington in attack, but if this wing is onside, and the referee agrees, he's given the penalty. 
In fact, he, he hasn't penalised him for offside, but in fact for going for the man, not the ball again. And the penalty to Australia back on their own 10 metre line. And not the first time in the game have they been faced with a similar situation. The tap will be taken by Jim Sedaris out on his own 30 metre line. Pictures tonight via the BBC. And this is a fair met by a rock solid defence. Made back for Jim Sedaris and then for uh, Paul Sirenen. Sirenen almost out of the 40 metre line. Getting a reprieve on Saturday at Old Trafford. Out it comes again. And the referee is ruled to knock on. So at Wilderspool Stadium, it's nil all between Warrington and Australia and picked up by the lock forward Maloney kicks ahead question mark on the center is he on side sale has got some work to do back in the end goal can he get back no he can't he passes and Jason Smith runs it away to the 10 meter line oh Wendell that's heart attack stuff yeah but it's sensational stuff magnificent play from sailor to show, have the confidence in the players around him Jason Smith had actually played in the centers from that scrum loss just bolstering some defence out there as Australia go wide from their own line. Florimo got pressure. Harris had uh, three on one as Hancock gets a pass away. Langer supports. Sadaris is with him. Now Brasher comes through with Menzies. They lead the race. Menzies will score. Great pick up and put down. They're good rugby league skills. And Stephen Menzies scores for Australia. And it comes back from Wendell Saylor throwing the football in his end goal area to a support player to get back in the field of play. Great work from Wendell Saylor. Beautiful work from the Kangaroos to see that the opposition was short out wide. That pass went astray from Florimo. But Michael Hancock relishing being back on the football field. A big burst up the middle. Swivels, finds support in Langer. He had Sedaris. But Alfie looks back, sees Menzies only just on side with Tim Brasher. And they had a couple of metres head start on the wing of Foster. And Menzies did well to pick up and dive over. I think what we've got to be happy with, uh, we're seeing that little bit of magic from Wendell Saylor at one end. And this from Stephen Menzies. This is magnificent football skills. Picks the ball up, very greasy, good try. Yeah, that's not as easy as it looks, is it? Very difficult conditions here, the rain continues to pour. Menzies kept his cool. David Ferner, not an easy conversion attempt. Eight metres in from touch. 20 metres out for David Ferner. That's what he's faced with. And his kick is well wide, so no addition to the scoreline. Australia leading Warrington, four points to nil. On a current affair. Bad man. The first and only try, the other side of the break. Score by Stephen Menzies who, like all of the young players, will benefit enormously from a tour of the British Isles with the Kangaroos. 4-0 then, and uh, Greg Florimo working the play just beyond the 20-metre line. Fairly now. Oh, beautifully delivered pass. Smith is with him. Here comes Brescia. Brescia's with it now. Brescia away from Maggie. Here comes Lee, but it's all to no avail. Brescia scores. A try that started back on the Australian 20-metre line. And it started from the ball skills of David Fairley, who drifted across, committed two defenders. Jason Smith coming straight on his outside, just ran into the hole that Fairley had opened up. And then Tim Brasher was on the inside. Good speed shown by the winger, Jason Lee. And there you see Fairley going across, committing the number 11, Paul Cullen. Jason Smith assessing the situation, sees that his speed man is Brasher, only just on side again. The side step to beat the fullback, too much speed for the winger. Two tries in quick succession. You'd have to be very, very pleased with that for uh, chop class football. That came right out of the chop draw. Great break from the middle of the park. Well supported by Brasher, and he doesn't miss chances like that. Great score. Easier attempt to conversion then for David Ferner. So right in front. And a further two points to the Australian total. Carries them to a lead of 10 points to nil. Midway through the first half. 
at Wilderspool we look down on a packed house again these home clubs have been big benefactors from this Australian tour that was the try from the high shot and Brasher didn't have it all his own way but he was he was able to outspeed them and outstep them I'm looking forward to a big day game from David Fairley tonight Ray was very disappointed for him on the weekend pulling out a test match not through injury just with that that virus he could have been at Old Trafford in front of an enormous crowd instead it's now Warrington on a cold and rainy night I guess he's just happy to be here the first replacement made by the home side Sumner is on in jumper number 17 Phil Sumner for the uh, the Warrington team and uh, going off the second row forward Gary Sanderson Sirenen has been involved very heavily in the opening minutes of this game tonight and uh, is it any wonder because this and Bradford on Sunday really is their last opportunity players that are considered borderline to make the test the Ellen Road test match side because the other game is against the Great Britain Academy well I think also that Bobby Fortune's put his cards on the table and he said to the lads look if you want to play in the test matches you've got to do it in the club matches and these club matches are just the games to do it in Terry Hill again strong in defense Fullback, it was Penny who wasn't uh, impressed with his own teammates. He got up and mouthed off at them. Maloney takes a heavy tackle. And now Greg Mackey uses Bruce Maguire. Maguire tries to burst through the tackle of David Ferner. Barlow now. Maloney again. Ball going down into the corner for Taylor to come off his own line. Brasher with him. Well, Saylor started the tour with a, a real bang. He was the, uh, the player that the papers were writing about. Florimo, players like him and others. Dean Pay, Greg Florimo. They've probably occupied the headlines more so since, though. Sadaris. Hanger a dummy half. Hancock. So he's got and, uh, Andrew Eddinghausen and Rod Wishart in front of him now. Michael, recognized test player. Walters. Boromo and Sirenen lead the Australian chase, but they were both in front of the kicker. No problems now. He's run the 10 metres, Foster. Just on that wing decision that Bob Fulton has to make, Ray, it's, it's a tough one. Michael Hancock, I guess, would have been close to the first winger chosen when fit. With Rod Wishart, the leading point scorer on tour, Andrew Eddinghausen, the leading try scorer. And they're both in great form. This is Harris. Yeah, barring injuries, it would seem almost like an impossible mission for Michael Hancock. Well, I think you'd have to be very, very pleased if uh, it was Bobby Fulton to have four world-class wingmen like he's got on this tour. And uh, Wishart's took his chance and really deserves his spot. Maloney. Nuggety 5'8". He's very thickly set. Greg Mackey rolls that one down. I think he was hoping for the line. Brasher on the carry back. Uses Sailor. Sailor away. And Terry Hill has gone on. Oops. Kevin Walters has taken a high shot. Got down low in a crouching position. Made it hard for the big man, I suppose, in many ways. But they know the rules. Maguire it was. He looks like Robocop, doesn't he? Bruce Maguire. Good headgear, that one. is Florimo wrapped up. 35 out from his own line. Nice work from the Australians looking to spread the ball on the first tackle or second tackle on their own line. This time a little bit later, but Terry Hill all wrapped up by three defenders. Penalty goes to Australia now. Sadaris away with a weaving run from the tap. Then off loads for Langer. Walters is with him. Smith comes up. Smith. Oh! Couldn't quite hang on to it. It would have been something classical had he. Well, that was really rugby at its very, very best. That was almost a perfect try. Some great football by Australia. Just at the last minute, the pass went to ground. That was Dodson Castle. <laughs> Foster. He hits good this number 13 for Warrington. Paul Derbyshire, formerly a centre. Very strong front on. 
It's Maguire in the front on, taken well by Florimo. Brescia now. Number 11 for Warrington, Callum, using the leg to assist in the tackle. Half an hour of the match almost gone. And Australia by 10 points to nil. Langer pushing it across, where Hancock looms up on the right of the ground. Sidaris, Cyrano, inside is Ferner. Ferner takes the tackle. Greg Mackey. Greg at 33, Bruce Maguire at 32. Sidaris, a little flick pass back for Cyrano. Very confident side, the Australians, in everything they do. Langer over for Walters now. Walters! Florimo's been put down. Gingerly to his feet. It was a, a dangerous-looking hit on him, but he's okay, Greg. Maguire is tackled. Greasy ball. Wet weather. It makes no difference to this Australian side. They are just so confident. And really, they are here to entertain, and that's exactly what they are doing. I've got to say, Ray, that Warrington aren't afraid to throw the football wide either. You can see they're getting the ball alive. Bad pass from Mackey. Came off the boot of Maguire's play on now through Menzies. Now Smith. Jason goes back to the right. Now there's trouble over there. If he beats that player inside the 15, Terry Hill, Wendell Saylor. Saylor, big strong. And he's in to score. I had to hold it back for a second because that is the furthermost corner from our snooker club <laughs> rafters. But it's a try for Wendell Saylor. Well, he got under a pretty big shot there right at the death, but it goes down to Jason Smith. Steve Menzies offloading to Smith. I think he beats a couple of players here two or three times. Going across, trying to link up with support. That was a bad miss by the centre raper. Steps out of another one. Finds Terry Hill, gets the ball to Wendell Saylor. Little bit of defence over there, the replacement player. Phil Sumner went high, but Wendell Saylor able to bounce across. So Jason Smith, it all started with that uh, loose ball put down by Warrington, and the referee allowed the advantage. And Terry Hill did well, and then Saylor takes this high shot. But he's over to make it 14 points to nil. I think you'd have to be very, very pleased with, uh, with, with Terry Hill, really. That was a tremendous bit of football there. He looks as though he's uh, interested tonight. He looks as though he wants to play. And he looks like he's coming back to someone like his form, Peter. Yes, guess it's tough for him with the likes of Renoff and Meninga in front. He's very involved tonight. As Ferner moves in. Just offline again from David Ferner. He's had uh, three shots. Australia then leading by 14 points to nil. With some changes to be made, we'll take them in just a moment. Welcome back. And 14-0, uh, Australia. As, uh, they continue on with a, an incredible run. There's a knock-on being ordered. Wendell Saylor not at all happy. <laughs> really giving the referee a piece of his mind. Australians believe that it went backwards. Not the case. Pretty hard to argue with. Change has been made in the Warrington side. Mark Hilton has gone on. Gary Tees is off as they go on an attacking run, which ends for Lee Penny just inside the 20-meter line. Yeston Harris is the dummy half. And this is the replacement, Mark Hilton. 15 out from the line. Mackey calling it to the left. Across further for his 5'8th Maloney. Then for Big Maguire out wide. 10 out. Back and across for Maloney and Mackey to combine again. Decoys going everywhere. Penny comes in from fullback. Harris is with it. Put down and tackled by Florimo. Hilton. 14-0. Mackey indicating the kick is on. That was only a foil as he comes back for Harris to use the winger and all oh, the winger. He's almost finished, impaled on the side fence. 
spectacular stuff. Well, I think that's what you're calling keeping your eye on the ball and keeping your eye on the man. A lovely ball from Greg Mackey, but just look at the cover coming across from Australia. <laughs> so, from the restart, Warrington come up with the ball against the odds. Jason Lee. Mackey. Maguire on the inside. Looking to turn it out the back. Barlow was there. Has a look around him. They go open side. Mackey pushes it on. Maloney lets one decoy go to the left. Then it goes to a, the fullback Penny on the run around. Warrington putting some pressure to Australia. That's Hilton. Seven out. Barlow, dummy half again. Across the park to the left. Mackey not using the kick. Maloney. The ball out wide for Jason Lee. Wrestled down by Wendell Saylor. This is the last. Mackey, this time, right across the ground. Beautifully taken over there by Michael Hancock. Well, that will please Brad Fulton. Some great defence there. Excellent sliding by the Kangaroos when they looked like they were outnumbered. Notably, Jason Smith on this side of the field. Pretty good kick here from Greg Mackey. Dummy half took a little bit of time off him by throwing the ball the wrong way from the dummy half position. And Michael Hancock was under pressure to, to take that one. And it's a blood bin. There's Yeston Harris, the centre. Cut just under the left eye. I really do like the card system they use over here. The, the green for the blood bin, the, the yellow for the, the 10 minutes, and the red for, for the send-off. I certainly think it comes over well, Peter, because uh, it gives the players a chance to know what he's going off for, and the crowd also. But it's, I think Brian Johnson will be quite happy with his Warrington first-half performance. I, I don't think they're throwing the towel in, and I think they're sticking in there. 14 is on, Chris Rudd. Yeston Harris in the blood bin. And he probably will be there until half-time because that, that uh, break-in play is not too far off as Sadaris turns it back into the centre for Menzies. Stephen Menzies, the scorer of one of the three Australian tries tonight. Brasher one, Sailor one, Menzies the other. Menzies' try was uh, a beautiful show of the improvement in his skills. But he does know how to get amongst the tries. Sadaris tackled and the referee orders the turnover. Right on the halfway point. Alex mentioned that uh, Warrington are coached by Brian Johnson. Brian, of course, from St. George, 79 grand finalist, and is the longest serving one club coach in, uh, in British football. He's been here for uh, something like seven years, something like that. Yeah, he's been here seven years, Ray, and uh, he's absolutely enjoying the place. And one thing about the Warrington Club, they're a very, very friendly club, and uh, they've got a great set of players. They always muck in together, they get stuck in. They're still getting into Australia and making them play. Barlow now. While Alex was talking, there's a knock on. While Alex was talking, Andrew Eddinghausen on the bench over there or in amongst the crowd, feeding his face. Some chips and peas, somebody tells me. Chip butter. I don't think they have them in Australia, did he, Peter? Chip butchers? I think we do. We don't call them that. If anyone would know, I would, Alex. Terry Hill put down. Tackle was Jonathan Roper. Play pretty close to the halfway line. Sailor in a bit of trouble over there as Roper combines with Jason Lee to make the tackle. The ball comes across now for Fairley to duck and get away and stride out of a tackle and then answers the call of Bruce Maguire. Oh, he heard the Australian accent. <laughs> I think that was gamesmanship at his very best. Bruce Maguire, I'm here, mate. Rudd. Tonight, of course, uh, the co-commentator is Alex Murphy. The greatest ever to wear the number seven for Great Britain. He wore it with pride from the late 50s, 58 through until 70. And here they are, Warrington with a clear break. That's Lee. 33 metres out from the Australian line. 
Mackey. Just to finish that point, it wouldn't be too often in a commentary you'd be flanked on one side by the greatest ever from this side, and of course many people consider Peter Sterling the best ever from the other side. Brasher goes up. He says play on this time. Hilton. 15 away from the Australian line. Warrington. Giving the Australians plenty of tackling practice. Sumner. Mackey. This time Maloney will call the play to the left. Maguire ran the decoy, but all he did was upset the apple cart. Something might come of it still. Maloney. Lee a dummy half. Fingertip control, if that's the right word to describe it, from the number 11, Cullen. Centre of the park, 10 metres out. Chance for Warrington. Mackey kicks precisely into that corner. In fact, he hits the corner flag. And I think that's where Jonathan Davis would have taken plenty of pressure off Greg Mackey down that end of the field, just giving them a couple of more options. Davis and Alan Bateman, of course, Great Britain squad player out of this team. Just a little bit too wide, the kick. But Jonathan Davis's creativity and flair just being missed in that 20-metre area. I think also, Peter, that uh, the Australian lads know now that Greg Mackey is the kingpin. He, everything revolves around Greg Mackey, and they're putting a lot of pressure on him. Oh, that's tremendous work there by David Ferner. It might have been undone somewhat by Tim Brasher, but David caught and passed under pressure all in one motion. It was beautiful stuff. And good work from Bruce Maguire as well. You're not allowed to rake the football out, so he hit the arm of Brasher as he was preparing to pass and forced a mistake. As we get close towards halftime, another chance from War for Warrington to register their first points. Well, I don't think that's going to eventuate because there's the siren in the background now. So it was a willing performance by Warrington. They were a little bit keen on their chances here tonight. And the crowd appreciating their efforts. And I've got no doubts that the crowd also appreciative of what the Australians are again doing here tonight in conditions not suited to open football, but that's what they're giving them. 14-0 then at half time. Brasher got one for Australia. Men Welcome back to the second half at uh, Wildersville Stadium, which is packed to capacity. That capacity being 12,000, and Sirenan comes away on the first play of the second half. And Glenn Lazarus, who we thought was to start the game, is out there now and just quickly gla glancing across the team. David Fairley is the man that's gone. Here's Lazarus. In fact, I thought he was close enough to the man of the match at Old Trafford. The penalty goes to Australia. Well, I think that uh, Lazarus, the more games he has, the better he's going on this tour. That's right. But I think the lad who I'm impressed with on this tour, obviously, is David Furley. I mean, this kid has really had a tremendous tour. And I think it'll not be long before this fella starts from the, from the kickoff. David Furley is, in fact, the player back on the bench. And Glenn Lazarus, another... 40 minutes on the park won't hurt him he's as Alex said getting better with uh, every match that he plays he had precious little really during the 1994 season they come across and use Ferner now and Maguire comes over the top of Hilton they go left for Langer to give and Walters looks inside for Terry Hill Hill taken by Maguire the ball loose and Warrington come up with it Bruce Maguire might be getting up in years, but he's made a couple of hits in this match, and a couple of fellows will not forget easily that uh, it was Bruce Maguire on the end of them. And he's played very well tonight, Bruce Maguire. We saw him play against Bradford a few Friday nights ago. He put down a lot of ball, but his handling's been very good tonight, and as you point out, defensively, very strong. So Hilton it is in the 16 jumper. They had to make several changes in the first half. And here's Maloney, the 5'8". He got inside Kevin Walters, but Langer was coming across, drifting across in cover. Mackey turning it on the inside for the second rower, Sanderson, who's back on now. They lost uh, Yeston Harris to the blood bin just prior to half time, and 
He's yet to return. Eleven turns it back inside, and Roper puts the kick in. The fullback Penny is chasing, but that's about all the pressure that they're going to mount. Hancock. Well, it was really a nothing kick. It was a kick. Well, there's uh, there's Harris back on the bench with uh, some ice on that uh, cut cheekbone. Pressure now. Australia with Greg Florimo getting it away very well for Menzies but Menzies wrapped up that's three tackles inside the 20 meter line Sirenen just sets the record straight by getting it out to a safer region and four tackles gone now I think you'd have to be very pleased with Warrington Red and really sticking in they're not uh, throwing the towel in they're playing out football and I don't think uh, Paul Sirenen likes that I think he's, he's had a look at it and said you're joking mate at the end of the day of course but let's have a look at it to see what Paul's blowing up about at the end of the day though all the the talk and mouthing off is not going to get you anywhere well the referee has ruled that he put it down in the play of the ball I think Paul was of the opinion that uh, it had some help Ferner standing and offloading for Menzies Stephen Menzies uh, the pass is forward Referee was right on the spot. He couldn't have been better placed. And not only is he... Uh, I thought for a moment he was giving a penalty for deliberately throwing it forward. But I don't think there was anything too deliberate in what Stephen Menzies did. He had enough, uh, enough of his own problems without breaking the rules. Scrum won by Warrington. Maloney runs at the gap and is pulled down. Terry Hill, the tackler. Strong in defence tonight, Hill. Lock forward Derbyshire. Hancock has gone back to fullback. And Brasher has moved up into the back line. And uh, he's got the trainer there now with him. Yeah, it looks like he's got a, some sort of hand injury. And in the wrist area, he's gone over to the, the far wing, the left wing from the Australian's point of view. And again, that's where you'd think they would attack from from this scrum win. He's in a little bit of trouble there. The, ref, the, the touch judge enjoying something. The Australians win the scrum. Florimo steps back inside. Can't go through the 5-8 Maloney. Ferner. I just wonder, Ray, whether Yeswin Harris will come back into this game. Unusual, I suppose, for a player not involved in test matches to play three games against the Kangaroo touring side, which he will have done. He's played for, for Wales. And he will be involved in the under-21s game next week. That in itself um, might well be something of a record, but he'll do nothing more than benefit from the, uh, the experience. I think the kid also, uh, he, he wants really to play number six. That's where he wants to be in the action, and he thinks it's about time they put him there. Langer kicks through, put down by Mackey, recovered by one of his teammates. Referee rolling a knock-on. Or is, in fact, he's given the penalty? <laughs> I'm not sure about this. Oh, geez, it's hard it's, to read these fellas. Well, he's, he's ruled that he's played at the football. He's he stripped the football from Greg Mackey. The line finder is a good one. On the Australian 40-metre line for Warrington to take the tap, and Hilton goes ahead. Surinan, the first of the Australians to go up and greet him. Assistance from Lazarus, they come to Mackay and then Maguire. Or Mackey and then Maguire. 30 out from the line. Sanderson. Forwards coming in from out in the centres. And oh, what was that? A prearranged move. Shut down by Glenn Lazarus. Roper, the final man with the ball in his hands. Barlow. Mackey now. Grubbers it in to the in goal. Brasher's back in his fullback role. I take it that Tim Brasher is all right. Walters has heard the call from Hancock, but runs it away himself to the open side. 
beats two, and Maguire rides him into the ground. Right, it's amazing how many tackles Glenn Lazarus comes up with in cover defence in areas that you would not expect him to be. Great tackle there, very well worked move from Warrington with Jonathan Roper coming through, and one I'm sure Brian Johnson had a lot to do with. But with Lazarus coming up with those last ditch tackles, it means that he does the little things well. He goes across, trails across, and that's great work from a front rower to put himself in those positions. Jim Sedaris. Another Bobby Fulton offered by the BBC just a few seconds ago. Reminds me that Bob played on this ground in 1973 when Australia took the ashes from England. This was the famous uh, stadium where they covered it with straw to pr protect it from the frosts. But in fact, the frost was already underneath the straw. And when they peeled it back, they had an ice rink. And they played that afternoon. I think Australia won 15 to 5. Yes, and that's when they invented Tolvin and Dean. You know, that's when the ice skating come of age. It's oh, one of thanks, them things. <laughs> thanks for that little offering. This is, this is Hilton now. Who'd they play for? Barlow on for, for Mackey. He lets a decoy go and then Maloney around the back and then rope up. Got a good understanding of the half five eighth and the, the centre. Incisive run by Foster away from dummy half. Mackey once more inside the 30. Kicks for the outside backs. Jason Lee will be first on the spot. Takes it and gets a little shove over the sideline from Wendell Saylor. He might be getting a call from Hawthorne to Richmond with that take. Unfortunately, in catching the football, he was that close to the sideline that Sailor only had to give him a nudge. Been pretty impressed with the far winger, Mark Foster. The player just made a good run up the middle of the ruck. Got great speed. I think if you notice, um, Foster, he always chases the ball with Mackey. This is a planned move they have. They scored a lot of tries this year just watching the play of Greg Mackey. Look at Lazarus now. Peter was talking about the tackles he comes up with uh, in cover. And it is quite incredible, but he is, he is very fast for a big man. They use the back line. And Hancock. Ah, oh, good run by Hancock. I've come to expect it of him, though. Refuses to lie down. Langer inside for Serenin. And Serenin right down. Penalty to Australia. Cullen, the second rower. Number 11. Called out. Paul, Paul Simmons on the end of it again. He has very much been the dartboard of this tour. Anything high, just throw it at me. Penalty against Cullen. And I think that is a sign of the times. Jimmy Sedaris is out there with headgear on. It's taken him a little while to learn, but this is the place to wear them. Well, there's this about it. You'll have nobody with faint hearts on that field tonight because this is a very, very hard game. Yeah. As you can see with Paul Sirin in there, I think he's a little bit of a payback time from Cyril. Yeah, he led with the elbow there, Paul Sirin. Doesn't want to do anything silly. Already been sent off once on this tour. Came up with the lost ball as well. And so he really leads out with it again. And he was sent off for exactly that. That point of contact in, in defence of him, though, was the elbow, in fact, contact of the defender around the chest area. Yeah, no dispute, Ray, but you, you are begging for trouble. Oh, sure. Continuing on. Particularly if they're watching you. If Big Brother's watching you, you've got to be careful. Yeah, I think the same lad also, Paul Sinan, and he's took a few cheap shots himself during this tour, and uh, I think it's time for a big man. It's very difficult to just bite the bullet. This is the last tackle for Warrington, then. 20 metres out from their own line, and Maloney... Sends it down between Brasher and Sailor. He leads the chase down the ground. Sailor there. Brasher. Brasher. Diving tackle by Greg Mackey. All through the legs of Jim Sedaris. Sailor. about on the 40 meter line Australia 14 nil as Jason Smith gets through a gap Menzies tries to step out of a, a desperate tackle over there back on the halfway line and now Langer the go forward is on for Jason Smith again 
pops it up and one of the Warrington players comes down with it. Jason Lee is it? No, in fact, it's the replacement, Chris Rudd. Jason Smith was involved in the previous play. He did well to even be anywhere near the football. Warrington weathering that attacking raid and keeping that scoreboard at uh, 14 points to nil. Played by Roper. Hilton. Sunday, of course, the Kangaroos will play Bradford. That will be seen on Monday night at half past eight. That's in Sydney, of course. Check your local guides as the ball goes over the dead ball line back for a 20-meter restart. Bradford, of course, Sunday, replay Monday night, and then the next telecast match will be... Uh, the test will come to you Monday morning Australian time, 1.30 a.m. Eastern Summertime. Just become a mouthful with all our time differences over there. And this is uh, Smith now. Sidaris in for Cyrano. We're just looking at uh, one or two of these Warrington players where they look as though they're struggling a little bit to get back to the 10-yard mark. And I think uh, Robert Conley's been a little bit, uh, well, to say the least, if he looks behind, he'll catch him every time. Langer's off. This is uh, Walters now. When I say Langer's off, he was off from the penalty. The referee didn't know that he'd gone. Jason Smith getting highly involved in the second half. Now Hancock. Langer. Terry Hill. Little opportunity for Greg Florimo tonight, really. Sadaris back, Furness with it, Hill there, and Terry Hill takes the tackle. Over in the corner, Roper the man, the number four, Sailor. Attempts to do it himself. They heard him. Four of them in all. Very popular man, Wendell Sailor. The crowd boos as it goes out for Walters. Then for Brasher into the back line, Menzies is out there. Hungry for try. And that's good defence by Warrington. Well, it's great defence when you consider there was about eight of them around Wendell Saylor. There had to be a gap somewhere. They got him out there in numbers again. And that's called play on. Steve Menzies diving on the loose ball. The referee Connolly ducking from one side to the other. Langer across for Smith again. Oh, Maloney's hung the hand out. That's his third penalty that he's conceded for high tackles. He's still there. Smith again. Well, he's all over the park, Jason Smith. Walters. Menzies. And now Florimo. Intercepted. Oh, if he could have got a pass inside to Foster, it was shut the gate. Scrappy play the ball. It's been called play on. And what they needed there was a wide ball as well. The Australians taking a little while to get back into position. I don't know whether you'll see that the winger on the far side comes infield there and was in open spaces. Chris McGuire then playing the ball for Mark Hilton to take the tackle of Alan Langer. About 15 metres from the halfway line, Langer stays in at marker, stays in the middle of the ruck. Helped by Sirinan and Sadaris. Maloney. Bounce of the ball over the head of Hancock. Back and away from his own line. The coach. Ooh, hanging out some high, some high arms and hands. The Warrington team. <laughs> It's a dangerous profession out there at the moment. Menzies. Menzies! Put his foot down. Inside for Sedaris. He'll need some help. Finds Florimo. Florimo needs help as well. Langer puts his ears back. Gets it away for Sailor. Sailor will score. Wendell Sailor gets his sixth try of the
the Kangaroo Tour. Beautiful stuff. Length of the field. I don't think Wendell scored a better one than that. We've seen some nice tries tonight. That one is the best one. Just the involvement of the players. The work of Jim Sedaris to get on the inside of Stephen Menzies here. The backs combining with the forwards. Great work from Jim Sedaris. The little flick inside to Florimo. Didn't have the speed to get there himself. Alan Langer backing up on the right-hand side. He didn't have the speed. And then Wendell Saylor, a simple job to catch and put the ball down. Welcome back. Exclusive coverage of the Kangaroo Tour of 94 on the Nine Network. And Lazarus. Thundering run back to the uh, defence line. Brasher almost getting in behind Florimo. It brought a roar from the crowd, but I think the end-on shot would show that it was never an obstruction. Terry Hill. The more I look at Terry Hill, the more I get the opinion that he will one day, and maybe not in the too distant future, finish up in that... Uh, that pack of forwards well i wouldn't like to think it that no back likes to think that he's going to come inside but the way he's playing uh cherry hill it looks as though he'd, he'd shoot the number 13 spot i was just thinking the same thing alex here yeah. across now for langer langer rolls it in behind them mackey dives on it yeston harris is it is back on in the three and rudd his original replacement has gone off Jason Lee on the halfway line. He will take a few meters. Now Foster. Or Foster, F-O-R-S-T-E-R. Maguire. Interesting. I know what the people on that coastal resort of New South Wales would call this wing three-quarter. As Maloney knocks on. And the scrum will go down right on halfway. And Australia will have the feed. 20 minutes gone, so three quarters of it. And 18 nil Australia. I would think in by now, Ray, that uh, one or two of these Warrington lads are beginning to feel the pace. If you notice, there's eight or nine players all in a little bunch of five or six metres. Walters. Hill. Attracting some attention. Mm. Still to score a try, he and uh, a few of the other Australians too. Without a four-pointer on tour, it is only a statistic though. Oftentimes, those that don't score the tries are the ones doing most of the work. Hancock. Sadaris. Langer. Inside, dummy. And trying to keep it off the ground, he was thinking of getting a a pass away, Walters in a dummy half, puts the kick in, oh Kevin, a bit too much breakfast for the, for the number six, Kevin Walters. Great understanding of each other, Langer and Walters. And uh, it's, it's just a, another perfect example of a kangaroo party that's come away with two great sets of halves as uh, Warrington make a change and that is Tease coming back on and taking the place of Bruce Maguire and here's Australia getting a chance a cheap a cheap offering by Warrington and Sailor Sailor takes it within eight meters of the line Lazarus inside ball Ferner is with it there's the uprights Sadaris and turning it back for Serenum to go without it. And we come back out now for the 10-meter scrum. And Warrington will have the feed and the head. Serenum disappointed in his inability to handle the pass. Maloney. That's Hilton. The kangaroo camp starting to look much more healthy these days. Went through a period there, mid-tour, where quite a few injuries were starting to present themselves. But now Michael Hancock is back on deck. Sadaris, of course, back from those cracked ribs. 
Good ball out wide to Harris. Puts the step on Hancock. Not successful. The ideal time for the Australians to be in good health as they come up to that deciding third test. Mackey turning it in for Derbyshire. Then away from Harris. And uh, I fancy that's the fullback up in the back line. It is Penny. Mackey once more. Now Maloney. Pass has been put down. Sirenen is there to clean it up. Cullen, the offender for Warrington. Langer. Walters. Hill. Defence not giving Terry Hill very much room to move in. And Walters finds himself a dummy half and scooting away from there. Sodaris now. Serenin. Menzies. Eighteen to nil. Four tries. And here's Hill running onto a nice pass from Kevin Walters. Is this to be his first? Yes. Terry Hill gets a try. And to be especially pleased with that one. He said that he hadn't scored one on tour. That would have been in the back of his mind. And he showed great strength to burst through three defenders to score that try. The fullback made a mistake here, Lee Penny. He, he stayed back and didn't come forward quickly. Terry Hill burst through two defenders there. You can see the fullback is staying back. If he'd have come forward, had a much better chance of wrapping up Terry Hill, but didn't do so, and Hill under the posts. I think Terry Hill will be very, very pleased about this. He's had a tremendous tour up to now. He started playing well when it matters, and really, this is top-class centre play. He knows what he's going to do. The fullback, no chance whatsoever, and makes it look easy. So, 22 points to nil. And uh, David Ferner from right in front adds a further to 24 to nil. Then the Kangaroos over Warrington. Can TV's uncontrollable be trusted outdoors? I find that hard to believe. Saturday, four for one, Tina Arena and Daryl Braithwaite join Billy Bob and the Aztecs and David Dixon. Saying hey, it's the Grand Prix. Saturday, six thirty on Channel Nine. Twenty-four hours a day. 365 days a year in over 120 countries around the world you're never a stranger so at uh, 24 points to nil down sailor he turns the kick off from Warrington, Summer of Sumner has gone back on for the home side. And uh, Mark Hilton has been replaced. I think it'll be a little bit concerning with these subbies, where they seem to be coming on out the crowd. There's it about seven substitutes Warrington's had, but uh, Wendell Surley seems to be taking quite a lot of attention, and uh, him and Terry Hill have had very, very good games tonight. The scrum to be fed by, by Warrington, giving them... One of their better opportunities, Maloney running at Hill, and Brasher comes over the top. Mackey indicates they'll keep going to the right, and that they do through Sanderson. Not a great deal of pressure put on the Australians in the first two plays. Mackey goes back to the blind side, and they put it down, and he's offside if he touches it. And play on, says the referee. Sanderson went to put his hands on it and immediately pulled away. This is Sedaris. Sedaris just getting up, clutching at his lower rib cage. Hancock not held. Bumping them off one after the other. I think Bobby Fulton will really be happy with that. Seeing uh, Michael Hancock come through with shoulder injury, he looks 100% OK. Walters. Smith giving a pass on the run around for Walters. Despite the scoreline tonight, it's, it's been good for the Australians that the latter games, the latter club games, have been far more competitive than what we saw earlier in the tour. Very disappointing, the likes of Leeds. Cumbria, we expected a big scoreline. Everyone except Sheffield, 
have been pretty stern opposition. And that applies to Warrington tonight. St. Helens the other night, definitely. I think that's what Bob Fulton would like, some tougher opposition at this level before the tests. Langer then, drilling it down towards the corner and the line. The, uh, the bring back is there for full back, is it? Yes, Penny. So Warrington coming away off their own line through Harris. I've been disappointed with Harris tonight. Just looking forward to him playing again. Very impressed with the way that he played down in Cardiff. Just wonder whether in the back of his mind he's got that under-21s game just in mind for next week. We thought that he might have got stuck in out here despite being in the unusual position of centre. tackle now 30 meters out from their own line Warrington without points on the board trailing 24 nil as Brasher heads up the ground and beyond the 20 meter line reaches the the 30 Walters sailor two tries for sailor just prior to half time and again one in the second half 40 nil at half time and now converted into 24 nil and he's been great tonight paul sirenan spent a lot of this tour up in the front row position that's not easy as ferner puts the step on mentioned that players were coming back from injury of course paul harrigan out tonight with a knee injury disappointing tour for for the chief i would imagine missing the first three games through suspension being able to get into the test side and Sirenen has done a great job being pushed up out of that second row to the front of the engine room I think there's a little chip over and um, just a little bit too far but I think Bobby Fulton really Pete will be this game tonight will be pleased with the performance of all the team because it's been a good workout for him Harris taken down by Florimo and cleaning up over the top Jason Smith 45 wins in a row in other than test matches over the last 16 years of uh, of kangaroo touring sides it's it's some record keeping in mind that there was a time just before all of that that plenty of sides in england club sides and helen's alex and uh, this club warrington have racked up quite a few wins over the kangaroos yeah, i think um, uh, in the in the 60s and 70s um, ray i think the uh, st helens and warrington used to give the kangaroos one hell of a game i can remember bobby fulton when he played for warrington here been on the receiving end some very very uh, heavy punishments and I was one of them who give him a little bit kick uh, even though he was under extreme pressure by Greg Mackey is a good one sailor has the job of getting back he'll do that easily and, uh, making the tackle over the top is uh, Gary Tees who spent a good portion of the game on the bench Nine minutes of the game remaining, 24-0. Brasher out wide. Trouble if he gets through. Smith. I think the, the thinking behind this Warrington side being confident to, tonight would have been they may have thought the Kangaroos suffering some sort of headache after the weekend's performance in maybe more ways than one. They'd have had a big celebration. It was such an important game for the Kangaroos to win that second match and keep or test match and keep the, the test series alive i'm sure the players went out and enjoyed themselves and to here tonight it would have been tough just to get the mind back on the job but they've done it admirably as penny brings the ball back on the outside of florimo but can't beat great tackle from the north Sydney player so warrington just outside their own 20 meter line and this is sumner and the touch judges come in I don't know that it's Sirenen, it might be Jason Smith. And referee Robert Connolly has had uh, a busy night. And Jason Smith it is, it's the forearm as he goes in over the top of Sirenen's tackle. 
There it is. I think it was the forearm smash on the floor, actually. I don't think there was a lot in that, really, but um, I would think uh, more than anything now, Peter, that Warrington, or the crowd in particular, will be looking for a score of some kind. <laughs> well, they're pretty ordinary supporters, if they're not, Alex. <laughs> but they've, you know, they've got to be impressed with the, the effort that's gone in tonight. They haven't been able to match the class of their opposition, but I think, yeah, it, it'll be a, a fitting thing for them to get across the line because they've worked hard. They've been creative to the extent that they've been allowed to, to keep the ball alive at times by the Australians but the cover's been the scrambling from the kangaroos has been excellent Sanderson down by Langer typical Alfie tackle Mackey Maloney Sanderson Bennett is on in 15 for Warrington at dummy half. Mackey puts the little chip over, the reverse kick. Chance was there, Menzies cleans up. And Bennett comes in late. The Kangaroos didn't like the late tackle of Bennett yeah, on shot Menzies. There. We saw a cheap shot from Jason Smith at the far end. We've just seen another one there from Andy Bennett. Steve Menzies had cleaned the ball up well. Nice little move from Mackey, kicking for another player. And the number 15 has only been on there a matter of seconds. Just have a look at this. Very, very ordinary stuff. Well, I think what he's trying to do there, Peter, is win his spurs, but I think that's the wrong way to go about it. He's only uh, 18, 19, the kid, and he'll not get much older doing things like that. The crowd comes alive as tempers begin to fray. The kangaroos trying to keep their, their cool. Sometimes some cheap shooters try to make their name. They try to feast out on much more talented footballers. Well, now Mackey's been called out with Langer, the captains. Sorry, Ray. A genuine sign of toughness is are the blokes who were prepared to get in the defensive line and hit somebody with the shoulder under the ribs as they're coming at them flat out. It's not diving on a man already on the ground. The penalty going to the Australians. David Furner about the fine touch. He does so. 40 out from his own line. 40 out from his own line. He's now got to keep a lid on things here. I think the referee's done a pretty good job tonight. Yeah, I think uh, Robert Conley is one of our better referees, really, and uh, I think you've got to be happy with his performance tonight. I think Australia have had a good workout, and they've never gone, been able to match. Uh, Wellington's never been able to match him, but uh, it's been a good contest. This is Lazarus. David Furnup. Wall of defence confronting David. He almost was able to come out the other side. Langer. Walters. Tease coming in underneath. Snapping the legs from under Kevin Walters. And David Fairley is back on. There was a suggestion that uh, Brad Fittler was starting to stretch. I doubt very much that they'd want to use Fittler in the match. <laughs> so the ball out on the fall. 24-0 Australia at Wildersville. A renegade cop. They say the best. He is. Tracking a vicious killer. It has no motive. It gives no warning. And it strikes in a split second. Holly! Blade Runner's Rutger Hauer. I can hear your heartbeat. He knows it's out there. Show your face! He knows what it can do. Toyota brings you split second. Nice timing. At the special adult time, 9 o'clock Saturday on Channel 9. When you receive AAMI's lifetime maximum no-claim bonus, it's yours for life, no matter how many accidents you have. Call Amy on 132244. Wow. Hmm? Oh, that's really good. What's that? Well, 
this double AMI at? Look, look. Right. When you receive double, double AMI's, AMI's lifetime maximum, maximum no claim bonus, bonus, it's yours for life, life. no matter uh, how many, many accidents, accidents you have. Wow. Oh, that's fantastic. That's an amazing offer, actually. Oh, it's a fantastic it. offer, yep. Hey, where are you off to then? You're going to give them a call? Give them a call? Oh, no, 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 no. No, I'm just putting the kettle on. Oh. A fancy cup? Uh, yeah, duh. I might have one of those bickies too. Lucky, oh, well, I don't know if all that's true. You got me, baby, I got you. Yeah. I got you, babe. When you're hot and dry. Played by Bennett. We bring you back to the coverage of yet another of the tour matches Sanderson 30 meters out Bennett a dummy half now Roper good run by the center and who do you think Eagle tapped him Lazarus the ball to ground referee rules the ball went forward no try but who do you think it was that intercepted uh, Jonathan Roper with uh, a little ankle tap. It was Glenn Lazarus. You've got to be very, very happy about this fella. A prop forward, a number 10. This fella's getting fitter. Look where he is. He's in the right place at the right time and stops a certain try. Yeah, exactly the move we saw Warrington put on earlier in the match, which nearly resulted in a break for Jonathan Ray. But that time straight through. Big front row coming across. Didn't have the speed to come up with a, a proper tackle, but the ankle tap was sufficient. Now Langer. Very slowly coming back to the scrum. Not long to go in this game. Just a reminder, 8.30 Monday night, you'll see the Bradford Northern game. Yeah, hang on. That did not go in the scrum. It, it did not. I see some things in this game. What are you worried about? Um, does it, it really go. does it really matter? No, not at all, but it's the first time I've never seen the ball go in the scrum. I'm sick and tired of arguing that the ball should go in the centre, so why worry oh, about it? I told you, I was the only one who ever put it in the centre. Alex never went anywhere near it, but at least he'd throw it into the scrum. The crowd roars encouragement for Warrington as they try to deal out some punishment to the kangaroos. I must admit, Peter, I used to practice that every week. Now Florimo. Here's a halfback, in fact two halfbacks, worried that the ball didn't go in the scrum at all. He threw it between his own legs, Alan Langer. That was as good as I've seen. I've got to get that one on tape. <laughs> and there he is now, stepping back inside under pressure. Gets the ball away to Ferner, who gets some sort of kick in, and it'll work for the Kangaroos here. And the scrum will go down about 23 metres out from the Kangaroos line. We, just think we actually have halfbacks here concerned about the feeding of the scrum. Now, mayhem as Florimo and Walters collide. 24-0. I think it was a little bit of a problem of uh, getting your call right, lads, because uh, nobody obviously called, both the players were in the same spot. But, Ray, it's amazing how much confidence that second test has given the Australian camp. Everybody in the camp has lifted the game, and they look on cloud nine. Mackie now. Maloney. Maloney away from Ferner, but lost ground as Langer picked him off with Fairley. 30 metres out from the Kangaroos line. And Roper. Brash out. Across like the will of the wisp. Now. Well, this Players surging in. Yeah, this was always a danger of happening. Timmy Brasher, I think, is a little bit to blame here as well. He didn't need to carry on with anything. Tempers have been very short out there for a while. This is the last thing that is needed. It's been a good, willing contest. There's been plenty of high stuff. We've still got 26 players out there. Yeah, Roper was forced out. The crowd appealed for a penalty. Steve Menzies, it would have been difficult for him to pull out, but I do think you'll find that Tim Brasher really could have just turned his back and walked away. I don't think there was a lot wrong with that, really, Peter. I think both uh, players, when Cheney tried to sandwich him, I don't think there was anything in tension, but Brasher did carry on the incident. He's not happy with it. He, they pull him down here, and he takes a little bit of a, 
Well, it's nothing really, is it? Then he gets stuck in. Yeah, Muhammad Ali at his best. I want to know what the security guard thought he was going to do. He's walked in out of the crowd. I don't know what part he thought he was going to play. He, he's there to protect the players. If I was him, I'd stay on the other side of that wall. Well, this is going to be interesting to see which way it does go. Brasher pushed out, but it was the Warrington player who, I guess, did throw the first one. It's gone to Warrington, the penalty. The touch judge still conferring for both touch judges with the referee. Alan Langer being called back out. Wendell Saylor has got involved with a lot of stuff tonight. Langer being pushed away or motioned away. It seems they're keen to talk again with Tim Brasher. They're going to try and fit somebody with something. Well, I think you'll find here that the referee will do it right. You just say, now oh, look, we've had a great game. Let's forget about it. I'll be very surprised if you put him in the same Very, very surprised. I just saw Greg Mackey walk across, and I've got a feeling Greg has appealed to the officials to leave. Just leave everything intact. There's the card. Ten minutes in the bin. The replay of the incident again. I don't think there was a lot in this really, Peter. I think Brasher here just gets a little bit annoyed. He's trying to pull him down. And I think when you, you know, he just did have a pull and a push. And I think that did start a little bit of fisticuffs. But that's what rugby's about. The Warrington are 10 metres out from the line. Desperate to score. But it's all over. The siren has beaten them. Has beaten their aspirations. And Australia march away with this victory of 24 points to nil. Spiteful at times, but nevertheless, it uh, gave the Australians plenty of uh, plenty of cause to stay alert. It wasn't, uh, as Peter pointed out, an easy one for them, like a couple of the early matches were on tour. The crowd appreciative. Sailor two, Menzies, Brasher, and Hill scored tries. Rousing reception. Firma, two goals. Twenty-four points to nil. We'll take a break and come back to Wilderspool with Peter Sterling and Alex Murphy in just a moment.